And uh, I would like to rope in my panel of experts, uh, beginning from my immediate left. We have, uh, he's a seasoned, seasoned uh, political commentator here. Uh, he has been here for a while and he has been practicing as a constitutional lawyer, Gibson Gisore. Karibu sana. Asante sana, Ben. And just next to him, we have Tol Stud Alenga, who is a political analyst and also a governance expert. So, gentlemen, you've heard what the CEO has talked about. And uh, from what I've been able to, talk, to, to, to hear from the CEO is that it's, it's all systems go. And yesterday... In our uh, bulletin, we did hear a lot of parents um, seek clarification. Um, others uh, have a lot of questions. And maybe perhaps we can talk about that. Looking at what he's talking about, uh, matters, capitation, the distribution of books, which yesterday we noticed there are some challenges. And yes, with anything new in the country, we have to uh, run into some challenges. But he has talked about uh, capacity. And we know very well that we cannot be able to accommodate all the 1.2 million students in junior secondary pegged on what the government said talked about 45 students per class but what we are seeing and what we've been able to unearth as kbc is that uh, some classes are in some schools are have to take more than the recommended 45 a student i would like to you to to, to touch on that sorry i, I think uh, these are interesting terms uh ben Troy, in that uh, we are trying to usher in a new era mm -hmm. which has never been there before so uh, i like the optimism optimism expressed by the ceo of kicd because um, I think the way he's speaking, he's speaking as a policy maker, mm -hmm. and uh, of course uh, that being uh, uh, CBC being uh, a curriculum thing, and it uh, is in his domain, uh, he has every right to speak as much. But uh, that uh, same sentiments I don't think are shared across the country. Mm -hmm. I think from a policy perspective, he feels that he has done that which is supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you see issues logistics, issues uh, capitation, those falls under different realms. Mm -hmm. So those are supposed to be administrative issues which are supposed to be carried over by the ministry and uh, of course uh, implementation. Mm -hmm. So for him I think he is a right to speak as much as he is speaking because mm -hmm. for, for delivery I think he feels he has delivered but uh, you know there is that bit of... Uh, the 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 end to end mm -hmm. i think that's where the challenge is mm -hmm. in that we need to see the ministry also coming in place in and uh, playing a key role and sharing that the books i think the minister was distributing books yesterday mm -hmm. uh, if those books can be able to reach every destination of this country and then of course maybe the challenge of uh, the I mean parents are complaining that they are being asked to pay uh, fresh fees they are being asked to also pay some 20,000 for registration which they are not even given a breakdown of what is this 20,000 going for mm -hmm. if we could be able to get clarification on those and I think it will come in due time but the minister has been uh, very emphatic that uh, you should not charge people any money because you've given money mm -hmm. but you know Kenyans are Kenyans mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. they will always want to cut corners they will always want to take advantage of uh, of vulnerable parents because they are very vulnerable mm -hmm. because you don't want to go back to home with your kid that you will not be able to raise the money you are asked to raise so that is the challenge we are facing and i think with time is going to be dealt with mm -hmm. so but for now we have a challenge which of course uh, people have to speak out if they don't speak out then we don't get to know where the the problem is so mm -hmm. i think it's a fair discussion we are having and uh, we are going to see as we go forward uh, better decision making better logistical issues uh, being uh, solved mm -hmm. and the books getting to school and the kids getting to learn i think after the first term and the second term might be challenging but i think eventually it's going to be okay yeah and alenga we've seen that um, there are a lot of challenges and especially when it comes to infrastructure and the government talks, is talking about 15000 capitation and 25% uh, of that or 4000 is supposed to go towards the infrastructure and uh, we're talking about labs talking about classes and we have seen the world bank the government wants to partner with the world bank in terms of how they are going to be improving the infrastructure and i believe this is something maybe we could have tried a little bit earlier because the the, the strain as we have said just now has already left the station these are the, the ppps or the uh, the the partnerships that the government is seeking now i think it should have come a little bit 
earlier, but well, we welcome any support that we can get <laughs> to make sure the J JSS, that's the junior secondary, uh, kicks off well. Well, Troy, in my opinion, I think um, there's, there's usually, um, it's always, there, there, there's no r r wrong time to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if um, the government is coming in with uh, partnerships from um, uh, other communities around the globe that are interested in funding education here, that's a good thing. However, um, we also want to look at our own setup and how prepared we are for the changes that are coming and what are the attendant issues in terms of um, onboarding into this GSS. Mm -hmm. um, first and foremost, um, for me, in my opinion, I think uh, the junior secondary school is a very fantastic idea whose uh, time has come indeed because uh, it offers you that um, break of monotony of like you know previously we had uh, kids going to primary school for a whole eight years so within eight years and this is a child who joined that school maybe at the age of four years they do not really have um, something to look up to like they don't have short-term goals to, <laughs> mm -hmm. to to drive them mm -hmm. and now if you know you're going from um, from grade one to six then you will sit an examination you know that's a bit of a, a, a short period to plan yourself as a child and then thereafter you're going to do another three years so it doesn't look like a blocked eight years the way it was previously mm -hmm. and then you're just going to school by faith hoping mm -hmm. one day you'll mm -hmm. finish <laughs> class eight mm -hmm. and go to secondary school yeah so it was really tight some for the kids and you know that repetitiveness of the same thing all through mm -hmm. the same teachers the same friends so when we have that uh, JSS and maybe probably kids are going to come from other schools you'll build new friendships so then it continues to build on the child's personality mm -hmm. and abilities then uh, number two uh, we must admit that uh, this is a change that is happening and it is, um, it is, it is a, a, system, a system change, so it will take time. We must, we must be alive to that conversation that it will take time and we must be able to be willing to go through that process. The teachers, the parents and the students alike are going to be part of that change that is taking place. I, I think this must have been the same thing that happened when we were um, changing from 763 to 844 four. I, mm -hmm. I think by that time the, the challenges were even bigger I have met people who told me that um, they didn't have even textbooks to read they were reading 763 uh, textbooks anticipating an 844 examination mm -hmm. and the year around 1989 and 90 mm -hmm. there was very minimal people that were passing exams because of that particular change mm -hmm. but today I think we are a more informed society we are more open society mm -hmm. and uh, there are maybe better opportunities that are exist existing today that didn't exist by then so we should take advantage of that but most importantly um, let us not put the whole burden of uh, JSS transition to the parent because mm -hmm. I have seen some parents who are having a lot of complaints because um, they've been asked to pay others to the tune of 20,000 or mm -hmm. 30,000 mm -hmm. so I think uh, I, I agree with uh, Wakili's point that um, Kenyans have this queer habit of um, of becoming uh, of capitalizing on changing moments mm -hmm. to you know extort others and you mm -hmm. know make make a kill out of it mm -hmm. so you'll find there are some people who have already maybe lined up with schools in terms of selling uniforms they will say that we are selling this uniform at this much mm -hmm. and you know it sort of seems to be a blocked figure mm -hmm. so even if you went to this vendor they have already talked all of them mm -hmm. if they are charging a blazer mm -hmm. at 3,000 they are all <laughs> charging it at 3,000 so mm -hmm. let's understand that it's about our children it's not really about the profits we are making, mm -hmm. but it's about our children giving them a future that is enduring. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And uh, Wakili, you will bear me witness that, of course, we are alive to the fact that there are a number of challenges uh, with the JSS. And the minister, the CS, yesterday was quite categorical that you do not charge. Schools do not charge. Do not charge any registration. But we know how is that going to pan out. But away from that, we are also alive to the fact that there is massive sh uh, shortage of teachers. And even the TSE, the Kenya National Union, and all Kenyans, we have agreed indeed. Mm -hmm. We have a challenge. And that is why the government came up with 30,000 teachers. But even TSE itself says that this is just a drop in the ocean. And not only that, we have um, vetting of schools so that we may know exactly school A, B, C, D have, um, ha, 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 can now admit junior secondary schools. 
Are yeah. we slowly picking pace or should we at this moment, the government should be quite keen on these issues because at the end of the day, the 30,000 teachers, there's a time we were doing a simple mathematics and we saw that there are some counties who, who would not. If we have to divide them equally, mm. there are some counties who will not get any enough teacher. teachers or any teacher as well. Mm. I fully agree with you, Ben, and uh, I mean, thank you for that question because it's a question which has been uh, uh, discussed in the academia, uh, academic elite, of course, to, uh, I mean, you're talking of junior secondary. What, what is this junior secondary? Mm -hmm. uh, is it being taught by, I mean, there was an issue that it's going to be based in secondary school, mm -hmm. then later they said it's primary school. And there's that aspect that uh, the high school has lost that class. Mm -hmm. So it's going to have a lot of teachers who are not going to have enough workload. Yes. So do we get these teachers to come and teach primary? Mm -hmm. because now that the junior secondary has gone to the TSC itself is also having the challenges as to who teaches here? Mm -hmm. What is their terms of engagement? Mm -hmm. What is their remuneration? Those are some of the challenges actually we are being faced. A friend of mine was actually involved with the coming up with the policy for TSC. I uh, asked him these questions and they said, you know, those are the same questions I've been asking TSC and they have not gotten <laughs> any answers. Mm -hmm. TSC is waiting for answers from the, from the ministry or government and government is also asking them, by the way, what do you think? Mm -hmm. So we are in that particular situation where we are not able to tell because uh, our well back teachers, uh, primary teachers could go for diploma and degree Mm -hmm. But the government came and stopped that. Mm -hmm. So when it stopped that, it was stopped and actually stopped promoting them. Mm -hmm. uh, so when that happened, it became a disincentive. Mm -hmm. But now they are saying if you have a diploma or a degree and you're in a primary teacher, you're actually going to be the first person to teach junior secondary. Mm -hmm. And the terms going to change. Uh, what are the engagement terms? Uh, of course, the curriculum is out. I think that's what I think the CEO is talking about. That mm -hmm. one is out. But what they're not telling us, who is going to teach? How many are supposed to be teaching because there are around 14 units are here, mm -hmm. which will of course be a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Who are these teachers? Do you train primary teachers to come and teach or do you get the secondary teachers who have actually left, uh, uh, who don't have enough work at the high school to come and teach? Who is going, because they're, they're being domiciled in a primary school, they're here, they're going to have even different board, ma board of management. Mm -hmm. So having a different board of management within the same institution, are you still going to have the same headmaster answer to two boards? Because mm. <laughs> those are key challenges mm. which uh, we've not been told. So if we're going to look at this thing wholesomely, mm. uh, the government needs to come out. I think we need a lot of stakeholder engagement, mm -hmm. a lot of public participation, which ought to have been done before, because initially the idea was to be in secondary, but all of a sudden it changed to primary. That idea the moving from secondary to primary of course i think is a good idea mm -hmm. uh, after parents said we can't let our kids be who are very young to be so far away so that actually is an aspect of public participation which brought to the fore a challenge which was live within this particular idea of cbc mm -hmm. and government should engage more with the parents and teachers to actually be able to find a roadmap Mm -hmm. Because now it seems everybody is trying to run his own race mm -hmm. and we eventually want to win the same prize. Mm -hmm. And that is going to be a problem and uh, we are hoping that uh, we get this answer sooner. Mm -hmm. I hope uh, the ministry will uh, be able to call upon all the stakeholders to a conference and be able to come up with a conference paper and agree on uh, the way forward or a common policy because TSC is busy doing its own policy on the side. Mm -hmm. uh, curriculum development under KCD, you have heard the CEO speak uh, very confident that for him he has done his bit. Mm -hmm. The ministry is, is being challenged with issues of logistics mm -hmm. and uh, now, I mean, all these things combined are going to be a nightmare. I think it's only better that they read from one script. I think the challenge also could have been because of the transition of the politics, mm -hmm. but now there's no excuse. Somebody needs to uh, be able to streamline the whole thing. Alenga, let me pick from where Wakili has left. Indeed, they need, there's need for clarity. I remember yesterday a, a, a parent who was being interviewed said that uh, government needs to be clear in terms of the, the, the CS talked about there is no registration fee, but the, the, they want to know about the fees, they want to know clarity on the books, and they want clarity on the uniforms. And you have said that uh, you, 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 you had a parent be talking about he was asked for 20,000, 10,000. These are some of the things that the CS did warn yesterday, but he didn't come out quite clear on those three aspects.
I, I think uh, the space is now very open for rogue operatives to take advantage of the parents. And unless the ministry really comes up um, hands on to ensure that this onboarding process is, um, is one that is seamless, it's uh, flexible for the parents and the learners alike, and that um, a few elements that are trying to take advantage are actually brought to book. That's the only way that the ministry will be able to ensure that they, the, the, those incidences do not arise. Mm -hmm. Because uh, like uh, Wakili was saying, the parents would reach a place where they would just complain, but then they, they can't now get their kids back home. So in the interest of just wanting to place their kids, they will bow down to those uh, particular mm -hmm. demands from the, from the teachers of those particular schools. Mm -hmm. and also so uh, there's also another, I another issue of uh, some parents will, will not want to, to speak out because they do not want their children to be victimized thereafter. You know, so I, I think it's um, as the government fully understands that um, this is a novel idea and mm. it's their idea, and they are um, doing everything possible to make sure that it's it's rolled out in the in the most perfect way possible. So the government really has to be hands on. Mm. I think I really like when I see like the CEO of uh, KICD going out uh, all the way to Kisumu to actually check what is going on on the mm. ground because mm. they need to have a clear picture of what is going on. Mm to report back to the ministry and the other attendant um, bodies uh, the true picture of what is happening on the ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's have the last word on matters education before we shift to matters politics. And uh, Gisore, you will agree with me that uh, despite the fact that we have a lot of uh, public schools, they are not quite endowed the same way. You mm -hmm. find some public schools have better facilities than mm -hmm. others. We're talking about a capitation of 15,000 shillings. Uh, 4,000 shillings should be used to better the infrastructure. And looking at these figures, if you're talking about 4,000 for a person in Nairobi, you cannot talk about the same thing in uh, Kisi, mm -hmm. in Vihiga, in Embu, in Turkana. In in Turkana. Mm -hmm. How do we harmonize to ensure that uh, all our children, and especially those in public schools, do not get the short end of the stick when we talk about resources and uh, the, the quality of education that they get. I think that is upon the ministry to actually be able to come up with a clear policy to ensure that the education goes to every Kenyan kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ministers are quite a task to ensure that. It's really unfortunate uh, to hear that uh, up to now we still cannot be able to fund our own education. You know, a country which has been free for almost 60 years, mm -hmm. you could expect better because, I mean, Korea and the, 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 the Taiwan and the, the, and the Malaysia have also been equally independent for 60 years, but they're so far off. Mm -hmm. So there is something wrong which we have been doing because right from the time of independence, I watched some clip uh, way back, I think I saw the former, the former first president of the country mm -hmm. was talking of uh, World Bank funding and, uh, and doing 300 uh, school classes. Uh, for, for, for the country. I mean, we cannot be talking about the same thing. But nonetheless, we need all the help we need, as Alenga said. Mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, this is a very good uh, move that uh, we actually need uh, the World Bank or the stakeholders to come and help because the ministry is, seems to be impaired or we do not have enough uh, fiscal uh, amounts to ensure that uh, we have enough classes across the country. Magoa tried and I think he did a couple of classes within a short time. If the same spirit could be continued, I think within a short time we would end up with enough classes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's only that uh, in this country, for anything serious to happen, we need uh, donations from, a diff from, from uh, an international body or a different country, mm -hmm. which is really very sad, and that bothers me a lot, because uh, even the courts, you know, the judiciary, uh, the constructions of these big courts you're seeing around, <laughs> it's not uh, through the government exchequer, it's mm -hmm. actually through the World Bank. So that's where we, <laughs> we are seeing those very nice infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But um, what I believe that the World Bank, whenever they come in, they ensure that uh, there is standard work. Mm -hmm. That is one thing, that uh, the standard of the contractors and this mm -hmm. delivery. Uh, that we can be sure, as opposed to we give to Kenyan contractors who are operating with the ministry, of course we may not end up with any class at all. Mm -hmm. So it's a positive <laughs> thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a positive thing and uh, I think for checks and balances we are sure that the, through the World Bank we are going to have enough classes mm -hmm. and we need to thank them anyway because uh, now we are at their masses. Mm -hmm. We just need to work and hope for the best. Indeed, thank you so much. and. Uh,
That is where we wrap it up when you talk about matters education. Of course, we will keep a keen eye on uh, what goes on today. The junior secondary did begin yesterday. And uh, if you ask me, it's, it's a good diversion from the politics that we have. And for the last one week, we've had some quite explosive politics. And that is what we are going to be discussing when we take a quick break together with Gibson Gisori, who is a constitutional lawyer, and also uh, Tolstan Alenga, who is a governance and uh, also a political analyst who will be attacking all that the politics of the day the azimio and the government politics right after this short break